Hello everybody, Pete here with a new Lightroom tip and this one is especially about the new Lightroom's classic 7.4 update. So if you're watching this it means that it has been released and there's a couple of small but cool new features again that build upon the new preset and profile architecture that was introduced in the 7.3 update. So I'll start with kind of a recap of that. And there's also, if you're uh, installing it, a 7.4 update, you'll be greeted with this um, welcome message that uh, explains to you what's, uh, what's new, but I'm gonna go over it, so you uh, might as well um, skip that. So, okay, let's uh, see what, what is new. Well, first of all, like I said, a small recap, because basically what happened in Lightroom 7.3, Lightroom Classic 7.3, is that the profiles got completely re, um, relocated and also revamped. So profiles used to be in the calibration section and they are now in the basic panel where they should have been uh, all along. And you have this profile browser here which you can access either by clicking browse or by clicking this icon and this gives you access to three types of profiles. First of all, and there used to be only two before 7.3, so we have the Adobe RAW profiles and now the default of an image is Adobe Color where it used to be Adobe Standard. So just as a small you know, recap, a profile is something that is applied to your RAW file. It's not a preset, it's just like the the initial conversion basically, the, the, what you see initially when you uh, open a RAW file in the develop module, it's always got a profile applied to it. And it used to be Adobe Standard and Adobe has switched it to Adobe Color. Standard is still around if you prefer that for some reason. The difference is that, stand, that uh, color is a little bit more saturated, a little bit more contrasty also, because apparently that's what people tend to prefer. Okay, so that's the new Adobe uh, RAW profiles. Then um, there's also, again, these used to be in Lightroom for, for uh, quite a while, but they were hard to discover. What we now also have is the camera matching profiles. For example, if you shoot a specific simulation on your camera, like this is a Fuji, uh, Fuji file, so um, I generally like to shoot with a Pro Next Standard. So if you compare that to uh, Adobe Color, for example, you'll see that there's uh, quite a, a different look. This one looks a lot softer, which I prefer because then I can add a little bit more of my own processing. So, well, these ca camera matching profiles are there and obviously they're different for the type of uh, camera that you might be using. And then the new ones, and those are really the ones that I'm super excited about are the artistic profiles. And Lightroom ships with a couple of them, but the cool thing is that you can create your own. And I'm actually in the process of creating um, a profile pack for Lightroom. And the difference between presets and profiles is again, presets change slider settings. Profiles actually get applied before you even change any slider settings. And as a result, you can actually mix presets and profiles together. But what's really cool about profiles, for example, this is one that I'm working on. If you hover over them, first of all, you see the effect uh, up large in the preview. But what's even better is that you have an amount slider. So suppose that, and not even suppose, I mean, I really think I like this profile on this image, but I think it's a bit too much. It's a bit too contrasty, a bit too, uh, you know, too much of the effect. So before with presets, you used to have to, you know, dial, uh, dial every slider down back to its original value. Now you can just use the amount slider and scale back this effect to, for example, 54 or 48 or whatever percent you want. You see, this is without any uh, profile applied. This is the default image and this is with let's let's say 65% uh, of the profile applied. So this is really cool. And again, you see that there is nothing has changed with regards to the um, actual uh, slider setting. So the profile gets applied before those possible slider changes, but you can obviously still change the slider. So if you want to add some clarity again, you can do that. If you want to desaturate this a little bit more, you can do that. 
You can even create a preset which includes a profile uh, as a basic uh, starting point if you want. It, it, it's really cool. So another thing that was new in the 7.3 update was that presets have been revamped. Now there was a bit of an issue with the um, importing of the older presets but that's been uh, sorted out in the 7.3.1 update. But just as a, as a recap one of the really cool things in presets is again that you also have a a full size preview of those presets. Okay, so that's a small recap of the 7.3 update. Now 7.4 builds upon that with amongst others um, the fact that as presets and profiles become even more important, it also becomes more important to manage them uh, nicely. And one of the things you can do is that if you, uh, for example, if you have a lot of presets and profiles, well, sometimes you don't want to see all of them and up until now the only way to see less presets or profiles was to simply delete them. But that might be a bit, you know, exaggerated too. So what you can do now is if you um, right click on um, any of the uh, profile headers here, for example, let's say uh, this one here, the artistic one, uh, anyone will do, you just right click, you can choose manage profiles. And what this allows you to do is uncheck the ones that you don't want to see, but they're still there, you just don't see them. So this prevents you from having a really long, large list. So suppose I don't want to see my lighted up bonus presets, okay? Well, you see, now they are gone and the others are still there. Now, what if I want to see them again? Well, I can do uh, two things. I can right click again and choose manage profiles and check them. But suppose I haven't checked everything. Well, then I can also just choose uh, right click and choose reset hidden profiles. That will reset all your hidden profiles. And the cool thing is that the same uh, also goes for preset. By the way, there's also a new favorites folder that was introduced in 7.3. So if you have a, a preset you really like, you can right click it and you can choose to add it to your favorites. And it will still be wherever it is uh, in the uh, folder, uh, in the preset folder, but it will also be added to your like favorite presets. Another really cool feature, but um, this is not what this is not 7.3 um, or this is not a 7.4 feature. But what is a 7.4 feature is that if you click on the little plus icon here, you have the manage presets option, and again you can uncheck as many preset folders as you like, and then they will be hidden from view, but they will still be on your system. So another really cool feature. Okay, so. That's as far as the preset organization goes. What also is new is that there is now support for Apple's HEIC file format. Um, so if you happen to use that format, well then you, you, should, be, uh, you should be good to go. Um, another new feature is also organizational and that has to do with folders. You can now mark folders with color labels and you can filter across those labeled folders. For example, if I right click again on my desktop here, I can add a color label, for example, red, and then in my folders filter, which is already there uh, a while and which has gotten faster, I now have the option to show only the labeled folders and this will filter my images or my folders down to only those who have received a color label. So that's another small but not an important new feature to improve your organization of your Lightroom catalog. And then finally, another new feature, again it has to deal with improving your organization, is when you create a panorama, and as you probably know you can do this inside of uh, Lightroom for quite some time now. Uh, well, first of all, um, you can also now create panoramas, but again that's a, uh, not a totally new feature, based on smart previews. However, be careful if you do that because, well, it's not like it will substitute the original images once they become available. It will really base your panorama on the smart uh, preview. So I wouldn't do this unless for this demo here. Um, and the demo is about this feature here. You can now automatically create a stack if you have uh, created a panorama and what this will do is it will group your images together 
in your um, in your grid view and it will put the panorama image at the top of the stack so this helps you to keep your interface clutter free you only see the end result the others are in the stack but they are not visible by default